Hey kids, Grandpa here. Uh, this video is going to be about motivation and about explanation. And uh, it's selling related, but it's more personal than selling related. Um, I'm doing this video in response to my children and grandchildren. And uh, I hope you'll bear with me for a little bit. Because this is uh, just dog just slightly outside the normal kind of stuff that I do um, the question is why go sailing um, I'm living up here uh, uh, alone in Alaska in my little cabin and uh, by myself kind of lonely and I don't really want to stay up here in another winter of minus 30 degree temperatures and five feet of snow um, I want to go sailing and I want my family to understand why I choose to do that uh, because they are really um, paying a price as a result of me wanting to do that and I want them to understand my motivation and where this is coming from because it's very hard to uh, explain and understand this. So. Uh, in some in some ways doing this video is going to help me in, in finding clarity in my decision-making process so so here's the thing um, ever since I was a kid um, I wanted to sail around the world I, I've traveled all around the world don't get me wrong my father was a vice president for Pan American World Airways um, we were everywhere all the time I mean uh, I've been in out of Heathrow so many times, I knew it by heart for a while. Um, lived in, graduated high school in Bahrain in the Persian Gulf. Uh, spent every Easter traveling abroad, uh, usually in, in Beirut or the Spanish Islands or Jamaica in the West Indies or Istanbul or wherever. We, we just traveled a lot. Egypt, um, there's very few places I haven't been. But it was all flying at 600 miles an hour and you know you go to Kennedy Airport you get on an airplane and you arrive wherever you're at and all of a sudden you're immediately into this whole new culture and uh, I always wanted to sail I guess the romance of traveling by sailboat and getting to another location and seeing the world at six knots as opposed to 600 um, has always impressed me and intrigued me and I think um, Further than that, though, um, I've always had some motivation. When I was a young kid, I used to watch Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Hello, welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. And I would watch um, the, the, the Cousteau uh, television show, The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau. And I love those kinds of channels. I love that kind of content. Um, I didn't care for really anything else on television except for Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom and uh, Jacques Cousteau's um, Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau show. When I was also a young guy, I was into snorkeling and scuba diving as a, you know, as a child growing up. Um, I did some. Um, when I got to my senior year of high school, I ended up going to Bahrain, which is an island in the Persian Gulf. The Bahrain School is a Department of Defense dependent school that serves an international community. And as a class, as one of our gym classes that we could take, we were allowed to do scuba diving. And it uh, afforded me an opportunity to get a lot of pool time. Um, our instructor was a U.S. Navy SEAL that taught there at the school, and so we did a lot of uh, fun stuff in the pool. Um, like we would drop cargo nets in the pool and then have to swim through them. We would actually submerge a vehicle in the pool and have to swim around where we would get in and out of the vehicle and investigate it. And you learn to become very um, competent with your gear and very comfortable with scuba diving. Um, it would be nothing for me to be down and have to take my gear off, disassemble my gear, reassemble my gear, 
uh, and, and go on. We used to do things like uh, go out on dow trips, which is the kind of boats they have there in the Persian Gulf. And, uh, you know, our instructor, we would be out there in 40 feet of water and he would just take all of your gear and throw it over the side and say, go get it, <laughs> you know. And you had to jump in with nothing on, swim down to the bottom, grab a weight belt, grab your regulator, put it together, start breathing, um, find your mask, put it on, uh, find your fins, put them on. And uh, so, but we got a real confidence level and we learned to scuba dive. Um, and, and my motivation for that was watching the Jacques Cousteau movies. You know, I always thought how cool that was. And when we would go down to Jamaica and the West Indies, uh, we had the opportunity to scuba dive there. That was actually the first time I dove. And so we got to learn a little bit about that, and that was really exciting to me. And so my whole life I've wanted to go do this. I've wanted to go get a sailboat and sail around the world and do some scuba diving and, and hit all these great, wonderful sites that I've heard about, you know, the, the Sea of Cortez and the Red Sea off Egypt and, um, you know, the, the Philippines and all these wonderful places to go scuba diving around the world. And I really would like to see them. And of course, during my lifetime, I've been reading about coral bleaching and all these problems that have come up and how so many of the reefs are being destroyed and the fish numbers are down and, 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 and. Um, but what really has disturbed me is that since Cousteau stopped doing his show, which has been 30 years now, there hasn't been anybody that's replaced him. We don't have anybody in, in the American normal day-to-day -day media, um, nobody on the horizon, nobody in focus that is Jacques Cousteau. We don't have an explorer who does a lot of scuba diving uh, or an explorer or a diver that talks a lot about ocean conservation and those issues. We don't have shows that would empower people or interest people or motivate people to uh, care about the world's oceans and to see them. And, and the problem with the ocean is, you know, the ocean is like, uh, is like, is like a book, you know. You see the cover, you see what's on the cover, but you really can't see what's inside until you delve into it. So the ocean's very much like a book. You got to get into it to see what's there. And when you're standing there at the beach or you're driving down the highway and you look out across the water, it's just a flat surface and you don't get any inclination whatsoever as to what's going on underneath the water. And so it's difficult for people to concern themselves with what's going on underneath the water because they can't see it. And in today's media, new media, old media, whatever, there really isn't anybody doing an adequate job of representing that stuff that's down below the ocean. There's a number of conservation organizations that's all doom and gloom and the world's gonna end and save this and save that. And those are all important things to be done but they don't necessarily foster that uh, that ownership uh, ideology with the world's oceans and with what's beneath the sea, the surface. Um, they tell you about this fish has got to be gotten rid of, and this fish has got it. We need more of these, and we're running out of those, and we have too many of these. And they have all the scientific data, but they really don't do a very good job of impressing upon people as to why they should care about those things. Um, they don't give people an opportunity to learn about those. As a salesman, as a realtor in, in my entire life, uh, when I'm showing property, I find it's necessary to get enough information into the hands of people so that they can start to feel an ownership in a particular property. They can start to envision themselves living there. They can start to picture themselves, you know, in the kitchen, cooking breakfast, out in the yard, you know, doing whatever they want to be doing, um, in the den, doing this, that, and the other, raising the kids in the family, having the grandkids come to the house, um, you know, living their lives. They, they, and, and when people are, are home shopping, um, you want them to get to that point where they start to envision that ownership interest in that property. And once they have, that's a real strong emotion. Once they have that emotion of ownership, uh, it's a very strong emotion and, and generally speaking, once they're at that point, uh, they're going to work out and, and work through whatever hurdles or pratfalls or problems there may be to make their goal, their dream of ownership of that property a reality. So I am motivated 
because there really isn't anybody else doing it, I am highly motivated in that I would like to be able to bring that sort of ownership mentality to the masses. I would like to demonstrate with my YouTube channel um, enough information, enough experiences in, on, and under the seas that people will start to get that kind of ownership interest in it and want to invest the time, effort, energy necessary to protect the oceans. So that's sort of like my underlying motivation. That's sort of my, my main goal. And uh, in order to achieve that goal, uh, I, myself and my family pay a real high price. And, and I understand that. I'm not going to be around as much as I would like to be while my grandchildren are growing up and experiencing life. Um, I'm not going to be there to give guidance and direction or, or to enjoy participating with them. They just recently went to go see the zoo there in Columbus, Ohio, and I saw pictures and smiling faces of my grandchildren seeing and playing with some of the animals there, and I missed being there for that. Don't, don't tap on the glass, baby. I don't want... <laughs> and as a result, you know, that makes me sad. And so, you know, I looked at this, I said, well, you know, maybe I've had this dream of doing this my whole life, of going sailing and shooting all this great underwater footage and trying to empower people or interest people or motivate people to, to follow the world's oceans and, and be concerned for them. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should just, you know, move to Ohio and sell real estate there, which I could do and have a little farm and have some critters over and have the grandkids come over and play with the critters and you know and be more involved in their lives maybe i could do that um and i and i could do that and it would be wonderful to do that in so many ways except i would be failing everybody else um in that and so at some point You've got to determine what's right and what's important in your life, in your life. My oldest son said to me, Dad, do whatever you want to do as long as it makes you happy. Both things will make me happy. Um, I would love to be around my grandchildren and spend time with them. I would also love to be able to empower people and educate people and show people the beauty uh, that's underneath the world's oceans and why that should motivate them as well. So. So the litmus test becomes, well, which one would I be more upset with myself for not doing? How guilty will I be for not being around my grandchildren? Very. Um, but that's a guilt limited just to me and to my grandchildren. Um, what if I don't do my channel and, and I may not be successful with my YouTube channel I know that I may start doing this everybody might just laugh at me you know fat old guy out there trying to do something you know it's just a joke so that may not work um, but I myself will feel horrible <laughs> the rest of my life if I don't try and trying isn't a end all you know I can go out and sail around the world and, and my grandkids could come join me from time to time um, my, my oldest son is starting to, to realize and think that, uh, you know, there's no reason why they can't maybe jump on a plane and come and join me. Or if I'm down in Florida, they could drive down from Ohio, it takes a day's drive, and we can go out on the boat and spend some time together. So it's not like it's a total loss, it's just not as much. And so we talked about them going to the zoo, and I, I mentioned to my son, I kind of missed that. I wish I had the animals around so my grandchildren could come and play with the animals at my property and, and his comment to me was well yeah but the nice thing about the zoo is they can go and play the, with those animals and have it be a lot of fun have it be special uh but then tomorrow they don't have to be there and feed and pick up and clean up after those animals and so there's a certain reality to that when you're a farmer you know animals are a lot of responsibility in fact if you have farm animals you really can't do anything else because you've got to be there to feed and care for them so um, there could be some advantages, but it could be a limited and it could be fleeting. And so, and, and so that brings me to this video and why I'm doing this. Um, I want 
there to be some clarity and some understanding of what my underlying motivation is. Um, I want my grandchildren and my sons to understand that I'm paying a, a tremendous price. I'm paying the price. Uh, they're not paying the price as much. I'm paying the price. It's my loss. I'm the one that's not going to be able to be there and enjoy them and create all those wonderful memories and experiences. And I know that. And I'm hoping to mitigate that by having enough success in my YouTube channel that my grandkids could visit me often, that I could afford their airfare, have them come visit me wherever I am. And that way, not only would they experience some of the things that I love, um, but then they would also have the uh, advantage and the, the experience uh, of travel and being able to see other cultures and stuff. So, so that's kind of it in a nutshell, I guess. Um, and I'm sorry for the sort of selfish nature of this video being more about me and my family. I thought it was important to share this with my YouTube channel and my viewers so that you guys could have a better understanding of my motivations and where I'm coming from. Uh, my channel is not going to be uh, your usual sailing channel, you know, girls in bikinis and beers on the beaches. Um, there's enough channels doing that kind of stuff. Um, this is going to be more about um, not necessarily about sailing, but what a sailboat as a tool does for you and allows you to be able to do. Sailboats are awesome. They're, they're awesome uh, in that they create a platform that allows you to do a number of things. Now, if a number of things is just uh, hang out in beach bars and get drunk and give you a place close at hand to, to sleep it off, well, then that's one aspect of it. Um, if it's to you know, travel around and snorkel in beautiful warm waters and enjoy that quality of life and uh, there's there's that aspect of it as well. To me, I see the sailboat as a tool that's going to allow me to travel around the world in a very inexpensive, very cost-effective manner um, where I have a very low carbon footprint. I'm not, you know, on some big research vessel burning 15 gallons an hour. I'm on a sailboat using sail power, travel around the world, and will spend, I will burn less fuel sailing around the world than I do in a year here as a real estate broker trying to sell real estate with my diesel excursion. So it'll be a nice reduction in my carbon footprint as well, which I am motivated to try to do what we can to help save our planet. Um, anyhow. All that said, so the, there's the gist of it, guys. There's kind of my motivation of where I'm coming from. My underlying theme is, yes, I want to travel around the world, but my motivation for doing that is so that I can, I can bring out enough information, I can demonstrate enough of the beauty of the world's oceans to motivate people to care about it and, uh, and to do something about it. So that's the nature of this video. I hope you guys appreciate it and understand it. Um, and we'll just end it there. Please do like and subscribe. There will be some good sailing footage and scuba diving footage coming, hopefully in the near future. Um, and we'll just go from there. So anyhow, this is Grandpa signing off. You guys take care and be, be careful with each other. Be safe with each other. Take care of each other. Thanks, guys. Bye.